guys, what's up? It's Dark Mech here and welcome to another special snowflake on his special mount guide. As you can see by looking at your screens, I managed to get the time lost proto drake and that gives me the right to make another video to contribute to the already thousands of guides on YouTube for this mount. But fuck it, I got it and I'm gonna make a guide for it. So through this video, I'm gonna go over the spawn points, the flight paths, the spawn timers, where I think you should camp it from and pretty much everything there is to know about this mount and the, I suppose, the level of nerdism you are gonna have to raise yourself to in order to get this. There is going to be a sadness that will wash over you. So a couple of things to get off uh, first. Pretty much the Time Loss Proto Jacket shares a spawn timer with a blue motherfucker by the name of Viragosa. Now the spawn timer is ridiculous. It ranges anywhere from four to 12 hours at a safe bet. What I mean by that is there have been kills reported around 3 hours and 44, 45 minutes. There's also been kills up to 16 hours later. Now, in previous expansions, the, uh, the spawn timer seemed to be a lot longer and it seems to have shortened up a bit. But the, probably the safest range is about 4 to 12 hours to play it around. I did see a couple of kills from when I killed Vera at about 14 hours though. So anywhere from 4 to 14 hours, let's say, is your safe range. So what that means is you pick a spot, you camp it, when you kill Vera, log off for four hours. Give yourself that four hour break. Don't just sit here, log off for four hours, come back and start again. Now in regards to that level of sadness and nerdism I talked about raising, I, um, I started doing this on my PC. I watched all the Halloween movies, I watched all the Friday the 13th movies and I thought, fuck this, and I ended up doing it on my laptop, carrying it around the house, or plugging my Naga in, putting my macro to the button and sitting on the couch with the mouse in my lap, clicking it. It's a new level of sadness, but it's sadly what you're going to have to do to probably get this mount. So getting into it guys, let's look at flight paths. So you'll have downloaded your add-on for rare spawn overlay or NPC scan or whatever you're using on your map and you'll come to Northrend in the Storm Peaks and you'll see all of this shit going around. You can see the green, uh, the green one is the Timeless Proto Drake and there's all these pathings and you'll kind of think, what the fuck? Now there are four spawn points spread across the Storm Peaks and I'm going to go through the four spawn points and I'm going to show you what flight paths those spawn points belong to, if that makes sense. So starting off here at Boar's Breath or the Frozen Lake as some people call it, you can see this small circle. This circle belongs to Boar's Breath and Boar's Fall. Now it's worth noting that the Timeless Project or Viragosa can go clockwise or anti-clockwise. They go both ways and they don't have a preference. It is completely random. Um, Boar's Fall or the Frozen Waterfall over here belongs to this same circle. So you've got two spawn points, as I said, belonging to this small flight path here. Okay, so keep that in mind. They will stay, if they spawn from this, they will stick to that circle, that flight path. Over here at the village, the third spawn point, it has this slightly larger flight path. And again, it will go clockwise or anti-clockwise and it will just stick to this flight path here. It goes at 60% flight speed too, guys, so it chuffs around slowly. The fourth spawn point is up here near Oldua and it belongs to the largest flight path and it comes all the way down here past Boar's Breath or the Frozen Lake and it can also cut up through here, this through this section of the flight path, sorry, I can't talk, uh, and again, it can go clockwise or anti-clockwise. It is probably worth mentioning the two Time Loss Proto Drakes I got. Remember, I lost one and then I got my second one. Uh, actually spawned at the Oldua spawn point and flew all the way around to me at Boar's Breath. Um, which, in, in from my experience, and this is across two servers, one low-pop Brazilian server and one high-pop oceanic server, Oldua seemed to be the most unmanned spawn point. But again, that is just from my experience, and it may not be the case on your server, but definitely on mine, Oldua was always the most unmanned spawn point. So maybe something to think about when you're doing this. So getting into the spawn points, the first spawn point is Boar's Breath that I'm going to talk about. It's at 3169. And this is a really common spot for people to farm at, guys. You'll, if you're ever coming through here and you're flying, you'll usually see people farming out here above the frozen lake, which is why so many people call it the frozen lake. The thing about this is they're farming out here because they're trying to get an overlap of the flight paths, which is all well and good if you are probably on a really deserted server. However, you want to be farming it at the spawn point, and the spawn points are always out of the mountains. The Drakes or the Viragosa and Time Loss, they spawn out of the mountains. So if you see where I am here, he pretty much comes flying out of the mountain where I am now, 60% flight speed. He flies out onto his flight path, and then he either goes left or right. 
So to get it, you want to make sure that you are standing right in front of that spawn point. So you can stand here, mash your macro for your instant cast, your moonfire, whatever your instant cast is. I was using uh, Jade Lightning on my Monk, and you can clock it right there and get them out. Now my favorite spot to farm it from this location was actually up here. The reason being is that it comes out of the mountain, so it's less than 40 yards away, so your instant casts are going to hit it, and it's just out of the way. Now, I sat here in Shadow Meld, and um, a lot of people were kind of like, but, you know, then no one knows that you're at that spawn point, and that was kind of the point. Stacking is something that you'll, you'll, you're going to you come to hate. You're just going to hate it, but it's just a fact of it. People are going to do it to piss you off. By hiding up there in Shadow Meld, nobody ever knows where you are, and nobody ever really checks that spot. Horde will run back and forth, or the opposite faction, I should say, will run back and forth along the bottom of this mountain trying to get anybody that's in stealth out of stealth, but generally no one checks the spot that I've just showed you until they've seen this video, of course. So it was just an easy spot to say, and generally people get bored. There's not too many people that come here and do the eight-hour stint. Some people come here for half an hour, an hour, and they bugger off. This way you can just stay here and you're never gonna be noticed. If it comes out of the mountain, you're gonna get it with your instant cast anyway, and it's not gonna be a problem. So this is my pick for the spot to farm it from Boar's Breath. But again, you do whatever you like and whatever you're comfortable with, but this spot here is definitely my advice from Boar's Breath. The second spawn point, guys, is Boar's Fall, which is at 3577. And there's not as much room on this one. It's also called the frozen waterfall because as you can see, there's a big frozen waterfall. Now you see this shape here? This is pretty much where the Time Lost or Vera are gonna spawn from. And it kind of spawns sideways if I can get myself in. It'll pretty much come out of this position right here and it'll fly out again where I'm pointing on the map there onto its flight path and it'll decide if it's gonna go left or right. So there's not a hell of a lot of options from this spawn point. You pretty much have to sit here if you are going to tag it when it comes out of the mountain. Um, you know, again, you'll see a lot of people hovering above the waterfall. The idea behind that is when the drake spawns, they're either going to kill it in the air or they're going to fly in, aggro it, and bring it over to the ledge. But if you're standing here, you're going to beat them anyway. The problem about standing here is obviously you're not very well hidden. Even if you're in shadow mode, someone's going to land in you and see you or you're going to have a lot of problems with Horde if they decide to go that way. And most of the time, people camp this in groups, so even if you kill the Horde, you're generally going to get more than one friend coming back. The third spawn point is the village, which is at 5070. And this was one of my favorite for a long time, but again, this is quite a popular spot. And it comes pretty much out of the terrain right about here. So half its body would be in the terrain right now. You'll see it flapping, it'll come out, and it'll head again 60% super slowly towards its flight path and decide which way to go. So again, the easiest way to get this one is pretty much standing smack on the mark here, spam your macro. You can also stand on this rock, which is a really popular spot. My favorite spot in Prowler and Shadow Meld again was stuck under this trees being a sneaky little rabbit and just spamming my instant cast macro. Now Druids are definitely the best class to do this on with Prowl, Flight Form and Moonfire. Um, I did it on my Monk in the end because I, when I missed it on my Druid I just cracked the shits and could never log on again. Um, but again, the village a really popular spot and I'd recommend under the trees again in Shadow Meld. The last spawn point, guys, is Olduwa. It's at 52.33. It's all the way up the top here. And as I said, from my experience across two servers, it was the least popular spawn point for people to be at. It'll pretty much, again, come out of the terrain like this. It'll come out sideways, and it will come out, it'll turn, and it'll fly straight out onto its spawn path again, or its flight path, I should say, sorry. A lot of people will camp out here, and the reason they're camping out here is when it spawns, they're gonna fly through it, aggro it, bring it back and kill it on this ledge. However, obviously the best way to do it is to just, again, when it comes out, if you're flying out here, run and tag it on the mountain or just stand there, spam your instant cast and as soon as it pops up in the terrain, you will kill it here in this very spot, which is obviously far better. Now, if you're AFK or something like that and it does end up getting away from you, uh, again, as I said, you can just fly through it and bring it to a ledge. Otherwise, you can just kill it in the air. And don't worry about if it falls down there. There's no sort of barrier like fatigue barrier or any invisible walls or anything. You can go all the way to the bottom of that uh, little sort of crater down there. Well, it's actually a big fucking crater. And you can loot it. So kill it in the air. Don't worry about dragging it to the wall because someone will come and snatch it from you. So a big recommendation, goblin gliders. Uh, if you're not an engineer, buy them from the auction house. They're cheap as buggery. You can tag it in the air and 
and glide your way to victory. Um, at level 100, a one instant cast is going to kill it, though. One Moonfire is going to kill it, a Heroic Throw is probably going to kill it, a Chi X kills it, anything is probably going to drop it. You just need to make sure you're close enough to tag it. And as I said, I was farming this at Boar's Breath and it spawned all the way from this point and flew all the way around to me at Boar's Breath. Uh, and that is the both proto drakes that I saw. But again, that doesn't mean that Oldua is a preferred spawn point or anything like that. Think of it like a four-sided dice pretty much. Every time the spawn timer runs up to its random time, it's going to just roll the dice and whatever side it comes up with is that's the spawn point that it's going to come from. So that is pretty much it guys. As I said, I did this on a laptop so I don't have any footage of me actually getting it. I've got a couple of screenshots which you can see on the screen here now. Um, and my big advice is just make sure that you're close enough before you dismount and try and hit it because I, I cannot tell you how fucking heartbroken I was on my druid uh, when I ended up missing it and and I pretty much ran back to my body and as I rezzed it fell from the sky in front of me dead so it was truly fucking shattering. Um, I've got a couple of macros in the description. One is for a cancel flight form instant uh, moonfire. The other is just for a target macro and pretty much they changed the way MPC scan is. MPC scan will not go off automatically anymore. You can change the mouse over but if it flies behind you you're going to miss it. So my best advice is copy this macro, put it in there, spam your macro. If any of them come up, it will play the drum sound. Uh, you all know the sound, it makes your heart rate, it gets you excited. Uh, and that is the best way to pretty much camp this. Camp at the spawn points. There's a couple of theories going around too quickly. I'll just touch on about going around and killing all the uh, rares in Northrend. I kind of think that's bullshit and it realistically doesn't work. Um, it's just that crazy spawn timer. And the other, the other big piece of advice that I'll give to you is work in a group. And I know that sounds dumb because when I came over to farm this, I was like, fuck everybody, I'm just going to get this mount by myself. I'm not going to tell anyone when it dies. I ended up joining three other guys. We all manned a spawn point each for most of the time. Uh, and we were, if, you know, if one person was away, the other person came back, we would be able to fill each other in on when the last kill was so you weren't wasting your time out there. We were able to make a spreadsheet, which you can see on the screen now. Um, which pretty much logged all our kills, who killed it, what time, how much time there was apart, and it is by far the easiest way to get this mount. So make friends, help each other. It is the best advice I can give you for this. Don't stack. As I said, the spawn points are completely random. If somebody is at a spawn point, just go to a different one. Um, and if somebody stacks on you, if there is no one else and they're not going to move, you probably got a better chance at either moving to the other one or just spam your macro really fast. So that is it, guys. Thanks very much for checking out the video. Uh, I do hope if this is a mount that you're interested in getting, go start farming it now. Um, the laptop's a great way and just clicking the macro uh, as you go, you're not wasting any of your own time. And perfect time while Legion's still so far away, this is something to do. So all the best, thanks for checking out the video and I'll see you all next time. See you guys.